months ago, a boy by the name of Michael Bogan had his hands blown off in a homemade bomb. This uh, poem has three narratives going through it. One's the bomb maker, one's the victim, and then there's an Afghanistan narrative going through this as well, based on a story I heard on Anzac Day this year. Bomb. One. He hands it to me. His fingers. A pale spider. The ball. Its bloated egg sac. His hairs brush mine. Vibrations are sent from the world wide web. Between our two trunks, strings begin to resonate. Smooth as a river stone. Polished by eons of licks to the face. Dog nose cold. The ball is dimpled as though struck by meteors of hate. My very own Genesis rock. Two. My vice puts friction's strong law on the golf ball, my industrial popping candy. The drill wheedles its way, twirling through hard white layers like some seismic rig breaking through the Arctic's frozen crust. Scoops of white plastic fall like nail clippings onto the workshop floor. The drill chews the icing down to the black, quick of its rubber core. Strings reverse like smoke up the drill's steel chimney. Three. He hands me a backpack. It is asteroid heavy. He says there are butterflies inside it, and that if I pull the ripcord, it'll free them. Blue and green wings will fold like hands at the end of loud applause. The great sound of God is in the seashell I hold to my ear as I climb the fence. I tiptoe so as not to shake up my delicate cargo. I don't want to kill the insects. He says, the Americans will like me. Four. My very own Genesis rock. He says there's white powder inside that will trigger dreams. I draw the cigarette from behind my ear like a hunting dart from my neck's soft quiver, and he grasps it in one of his pale mandibles. As he transports it to his mouth, a fang jumps out into his lip like a white shark beaching itself on the red sand of his lips. As he slides back into the liquid light, the tooth snags its prey. He likes it like a fuse. Five. Up the drill steel chimney, my fingers scour like a huntsman and flick the last wisps of the golf ball's black innards away. I pack the bearings inside the hollowed out shell, like a wasp depositing its eggs into a caterpillar's gut, a time bomb with interminable pause. I shoot up the baby cannonball with my violent mixture, an egg timer fills with soot. Time runs black. I cap the improvised device with old chewing gum, like a coin that seals a dead man's fate. Six. The Americans will like me, and maybe even decorate my chest with chocolate when I release my gift. Whose heart wouldn't expand at the thought, the velvet texture, the eyelash thin antennae that curl at the ends like a question mark, the see-through wings that shift your vision like a kaleidoscope. I marvel at how so Something so small can bring laughter like a magician's trick. As I reach the soldiers, statues still, their faces lit like new bronze. I feather the cord and a dog barks. Seven. He likes it like a fuse. The ball is shiny as volcanic glass. The fused harmony of molecules melted in the sun's surface heat of a violent pyroclastic eruption. I upend it to shake out the white powder like a salt shaker that has become damp. Nothing gives. I bash it on my hand's dinner table. He rounds the garage and ducks low like a demolitions expert. There is a noise like lightning hitting a power line. The skin frays from my fingers like an umbrella that rips in a cyclone. Eight. That seals a dead man's tongue. What about who takes him down? The blast is about 20 aerosol cans of laughter lit up by a fire in his belch. I lose my balance momentarily like the bottom step missed when dead drunk. There's a whimpering that's not quite dog. I sneak a look. He's twitchily rubbed bent. A white blob grounded, curled into himself, like a kick to the balls in a footy scrub. My smile breaks open like a picked sword. The inky ghost cordite possesses my nose. 
I'll never run out of weapons. The internet is my ammunition dump. I, it's cyberpunk. Nine. I feather the cord and the dog barks. I ask him for a grown up cigarette. He takes one from his shirt pocket. It slides out like a white torpedo from its silver tube. He looks into the face of his afterthought. Beneath his helmet, his eyes are half lit and shadows of smoke of coal, as if they've gone behind a cloud. As I open the backpack's cocoon, bright wings flick out like a serpent's tongue, and the butterflies are gone. In the sheet, lightning sky, helicopters glow like black kites caught in the sun.